All right, if you have your Bibles this morning, Matthew 17, Matthew 17, brought a couple quiet seat prizes, all right, so we have the Christmas right there, yeah, some of the guys, the guys just go aw, that was creepy, all right, so we have, we have two little, two little, all right, so those, oh, ah, ah, all right, so there's two quiet seats, Mr. Ramos. Oh, and then I found these yesterday. Look at that. For class, right there, you'd be like, all right, while you're uh, in class. I'm sure the teachers won't mind. All right, so we have, we have both of these, Mr. Ramos. You can give out. And it can be high school. It can be high school, too. All right, it can be high school. There was uh, one, one man put it this way about starting school. He said, the professor started teaching at 8 a.m. with the lecture. I looked down at my watch at noon, and it was only 8.15. <laughs> some of you will get that. Um, some of you get that. Matthew 17, we're going to be looking. Uh, this is our only psychology class. Many years ago, thought of this idea, and so I call this uh, Bible Psychology 101. All right, Bible Psychology 101. Matthew 17, starting in verse 14, And when they were come to the multitude, they came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic, sore vexed, for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. Brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Jesus rebuked the devil. He departed out of him, and the child was cured from that hour. What you see in this passage, you can see it in other uh, passages uh, with Christ, is that somebody had an ailment, and they were brought to Christ. Uh, sometimes they were brought to other peoples, like the woman with the infirmity. And uh, for uh, dozens of years, she had sought uh, doctors. She had uh, sought help. And there was no help that could be granted her. But they came to Christ and they found help. Well, there's maladies that I think that are psychological disorders, right? Uh, spiritual disorders. In our day and age, there's all kinds of crazy disorders. Right? You've probably heard of them. In fact, um, I, I went, there's agoraphobia. Now, I did not know what agoraphobia was, but agoraphobia is the fear of being in the situation where you will have fear, which is scary to me. All right? Just thinking about it confuses me. All right? So agoraphobia is the fear of being in a situation where one might experience fear, anxiety, panic, or escape from the situation might be difficult or embarrassing. All right, so you have all kinds of these disorders, and most of you have been diagnosed uh, and are on pills and different things like that. Of course, we know the obsessive uh, compulsive disorder, uh, which some of you will learn, learn that your roommates have. But then, uh, I love this one. This came out about two years or so, uh, maybe even uh, five, six years ago. Uh, bed. Bed. The bed disorder. That is a binge eating disorder. You will find out. Some of you have had that for years. All right, binge eating disorder. You learned that over Christmas. All right, that you have a you have a problem with binge eating, uh, eating large amount of food when not physically hungry. <laughs> Rapid eating. Now I actually had that in college. College gave this to me. All right. Now we try to be nice and we give you at least 22 minutes to eat lunch. Okay, and that includes seconds, thirds, and everything else you got to do, plus get a little studying in. There were some times that I think we had 12 minutes to eat, and being a good college student, we also procrastinated, so I had homework to do, I had a paper to write, print it off, <laughs> and I wanted seconds and thirds. Okay, so we learned, even my children can tell you to this day, I normally can throw it down in about two and a half minutes. All right, it doesn't matter. It could be the largest 32-ounce steak, and it's like, all right. my, my dog and myself have contests, all right, as far as uh, going at it. But binge eating disorder. There's all kinds of disorders. So I, I looked, and um, there's actually, actually a new disorder coming out in 2018, according to 
uh, some of the psychological magazines, which I know some of you read often. All right, and most of you will understand this. Excessive gaming disorder is coming out. Excessive gaming disorder. I believe, and I, I did not see the stat, but I believe well over 50% of America has this. All right, excessive gaming disorder. Um, then I, I, I found this out, okay? Uh, SCW is another one. This is uh, social communication withdrawal. All right, listen to this. It includes symptoms of inappropriate responses when you are talked to. I'm thinking all of us have that, all right? Social communication withdrawal. Uh, it, was, it was sad. I was just looking up some of the stats, uh, trying to help myself out psychologically. And did you know that one in five Americans now have a disorder? Think about that. One, two, three, four. You. Yep. One, two, three, four. Yep. All right, and you go down, one in five. All right, 20% of us are basket cases sitting in here. All right, we have issues. We have issues. Well, there is a lot of issues, all right? But in the Bible, I, I, I kind of uh, thought about this a few years ago when you're dealing with people a lot, and I thought, well, a lot of us have disorders, but we have to go to the Bible, and you'll see through the Bible, especially in the Gospels, that they come to Christ and people who could not figure out anything, all right? They had gone to doctors. They had used a massive amount of their wealth to get something resolved, and all of it ended up empty. But they came to Christ, and some of them by touching the hem of his garment, some by doing uh, other things, uh, some, uh, it, they came, and here's a, a blind man, and Jesus spits on the ground. You're like, oh, no, 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 no. And he wipes it on their eyes, and then all of a sudden they're seeing. Some, uh, some even uh, remember the, the one girl that was dead, and uh, I don't know, I can't remember if it's Jairus' daughter, but uh, the one girl that was dead, and Jesus was sent for, brought to the house, and they started laughing at Jesus. And that's what we find often. What we find often is that the world and some of the remedies that are out there, man, they have all kinds of logic. They have all kinds of reasoning. They have all kinds of, of things that seem to make sense as far as getting some help, but it ends up that you don't get the help you need because we are avoiding going to Christ. My challenge to you is to go to Christ, but I want to look at three disorders this morning. Three disorders, and I think some of us are going to find that we've had them. Sometimes they can come and go. They come in waves because you're off your meds. All right, and uh, so then this, this wave of disorder comes on you, but I got three disorders, and I've named them all to help you out. All right, I've named them all easy. All right, so we got bad that's a disorder. We've got mad, and of course, we have sad. Okay, so the three disorders, we have a, a bad disorder, we got a mad disorder, and we have a sad disorder. So we're going to look at three of them here this morning quickly, and hopefully it can help us as we start out this new year. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd give us wisdom, guidance as we go through this message this morning. Lord, I, I thank you that we can go to Scripture and get understanding and get clarity uh, from uh, the Word of God. I pray that, again, as always, do that which I can't, and that is speak to hearts. We ask and claim your power in Jesus' name. Amen. So here we have, uh, if you go to uh, John chapter 12, John chapter 12, John chapter 12, and we have a disorder, and you, you, you can find this in a couple of areas, but here in John chapter 12, then uh, Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus, which, uh, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead, there uh, they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them uh, that sat at the table with him, then took Mary, a pound of ointment, of spikenard, very costly, most estimate that this was at least a year's savings, a year's salary uh, of ointment. And so she brings it up, anointed the feet of Jesus, wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, 
because he was such a frugal and intelligent and wise person and was always concerned. Nope. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. Use this because this is our first disorder. Bad. Bad. What is this disorder? Bad attitude disorder. Bad attitude disorder. It's going to come, and it's going to come in waves through this semester. It's going to rest upon different people. It's been rest upon some of you for years. All right? For years. Because it doesn't matter what happens, you're a crab. All right? You've got a bad attitude. Here, here's a, a lady, and really, it's her money, isn't it? It's her, her possessions, but here's Mr. Jerkweed that has to do what? He has to get up and like, hey, you know what? I, I don't know why we got to just, why is that wasted? And yet, God reveals to us, here's this pious man talking. And that's what happens a lot of time with a bad attitude disorder. They come across like they're all spiritual, all-knowing. But in their heart, it's just a sorry, bad attitude. A sorry, bad attitude that you're covering up, covering up with a little bit of Phariseeism. The Pharisees were like that, weren't they? They always had bad attitudes. Jesus healing people left and right, and they're like, shouldn't be done on this day. Well, do it yourself then, dork. All right, but that's what happened. I mean, it's just amazing to me sometimes. You know, like, come on. Oh, why can't you be happy? Here this guy couldn't see. He was blind, but now... I don't know. I mean, is that really him? I mean, remember, that was the one. I don't... Go get your mom and dad. I don't know. I mean, look at me. Look at me. How many, how many they're done? Come on! Bad attitude. And you know, that creeps into... It could be in the youth. It could be in a college setting. Bad attitude creeps in. Somebody comes back and maybe they saw someone say, Oh, well, I bet you you're just like one of those easy believers. You weren't there. You didn't see him get saved. And actually, it's not up to you anyways. Why can't we rejoice together? Nah, I don't know. Well, or maybe it's at, at uh, you know, school. And somebody, somebody gets a good grade. All right? And yeah, they may not study much. Probably because they have a better brain than you. <laughs> I'm like, well, they may not study. Why, why not just say, wow, Lord, that, that's, I'm excited for them. Why, why do you always have to have a bad attitude? Why do you always got to pour cold water on it? All right, but that's, that's some people. I can remember, this is... Uh, don't, don't try this at school, all right? But I did. All right, I was in master school, and we had a guy, we had a guy that crabbed all the time. I mean, just stop. Crab. He was always crabbing about the food. He was crabbing about the teachers. He was crabbing about everything. And the one time, we would be sitting at, at lunch and uh, eating lunch. And he'd come in, and over and over, we just started noticing that he was just, he was crabbing about the one professor. He was like, I don't even think he's a Baptist. You know what? I think, and he started just going on and on and on. All right, and you're not going to believe this because you see Dr. Vogelin in a different light. Okay? But Dr. Vogelin and I um, were there, and we got talking about it. And uh, for some reason, in his mailbox, he got, he got a, uh, I think from one of the deans talking about it, one of his classes, and he came to me, and he was like, hey, look at this. He says, I could mimic this. We were like, all right. So then together, we made up a verbios letter to this guy from the dean of students that said that it's been brought to our attention that often... Um, you have been undermining uh, the authority at our school. We try to promote unity. We put Bible verses and all this. All right? And so, and we noticed that he always, his mailbox was always open. So we just went in there, did it, slid it in there, and then we just kind of watched. All right? I can remember one time him coming up. He's like, hey, 
I got a letter. You're kidding. <laughs> Unreal. All right. Well, I'm being notes to us. He made an appointment. <laughs> and he brought the letter, laid it out, and he said, later he told us, he said, the dean looked at him and goes like, looked at him and said, um, and he said, when he just looked up and looked at the guy, the guy that had been crabbing all the time knew who did it. <laughs> and he was like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Right? But you know what, some people, that's what they do. They just grab about everything. I mean, why can't you just go in, get all you can? This is what I can tell you. Our church is not going to be like your home church. It's not going to be like your home church. There's going to be some things that, of course, we do much better. No, I'm just kidding, right? There's going to be things that you say, man, I miss this. It's good to miss it. Why you should. All right, but, there's, but why not come in and say, all right, can I learn something? You know what I can tell you? Ab Thomas is coming in. There'll probably be something that I'm not really going to agree with. But there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff that if you would just put that aside, you're going to learn and be bettered in your ministry. But having a bad attitude stops you from getting what you should. What, how do I know that? Because what did Judas end up doing? Betraying Christ. And it starts some with a bad attitude. A bad attitude towards, uh, towards the, the school. The bad attitude towards authority. Bad attitude towards my homework. You know, some of it, and this is uh, those of you that are involved in sports, uh, I, I go, that's why I like having sports, because a lot of sports is right here. Really, most say, now I'm not talking about, you know, upper collegiate and professional. I, you get to that level, I, it ain't all up there, right? Because they, they, right, they play at another level. And that's not, believe it or not, none of you are there, okay? I'm just letting you know none of you are there. All right, I'm not there. I've never been there. All right, they, they're at another level. But when it comes to high school or college, well over 50%, some even do higher, say that um, at least 50%, and, and again, some say higher, it's right here. Some people walk out and they're already lost. It could be in wrestling, it could be in basketball, it could be in whatever. I don't care, I don't care what it was. If I'm going into a game, I'm, I'm not going into it. You know, there are some people that say, you know what, it's not whether you win or lose. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah it is. <laughs> I want to win, oh, why am I playing? Why am I playing? You know, and, and I understand you, there, there's good sportsmanship, and there should be. Some of that is learned. You're learning that. Part of it is, yeah, I don't like to lose. But the bad attitude can come up, and I have to push it down, and I have to be a good sportsman. See, all of that can be learned. And a lot of it is right here in your brain. You're coming into a class, and it's hard. And the passage that we read at the beginning is teaching us in a bad attitude syndrome, how do I, how do I correct it? A bad attitude, this is what I want to tell you. A bad attitude is a heart condition. How do I know that? Because your mouth is speaking and the Bible says what proceeds out of your mouth comes from the heart. It comes from the heart. So work on your heart. When one is right with God, their heart is right. They become a blessing to all around them. Someone once said this, happiness is a state of mind. And then a person attitude and said, joy is a state of the heart. And that's what we should have. I understand happiness. I know all there's this there's this uh, play out there or a ploy out there or books that are written that saying man we need to be happy and part of it is because in America man there are so many crabby people and you'd say wait a minute you got more money than you've ever had you have more education than you ever had you've got more things than you've ever had and yet there's less happiness. And most of them, they're writing happiness as a state. Of, well, joy is a state of the heart as a Christian. Bad attitude disorder. Our second one. 
our second disorder we find in Matthew 19. Matthew 19, verse 20. Oh, actually, in verse 16, Behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And so Christ starts picking him apart in his therapeutic way. He saith unto which, Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder and all that. So the young man said unto him, verse 20, all these have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? He's laying on the couch there. And so here, what does Jesus say? If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Sad, or bad, a <laughs> bad attitude disorder. Mad. Material attainment disorder. Material attainment disorder. What is, what is this? It's covetousness. It's living for all right now. And it's, it's one of the things that, uh, especially in the college realm, you're going into full-time service. There's some in, in high school. Um, maybe God's calling you. And so directed specifically to those going into full-time service, it's a requirement for us to what? Not be greedy of filthy lucre. So why is it saying that? Because it can be a problem. A problem to look out there and say, wow, wow. Oh, lay it on that. And you don't have to, some of it is learning, uh, learning to take care of things. Right? Because God gives you things. All right, I, I, I uh, thought of this. Okay, this right here, this suit. All right, this is actually a tailored suit. Tailored, right, right there, from Custom Tailored in Korea. Do you know how old this suit is? This is older than some of you are alive over here. How old are you, Bethlehem? All right, little, little David, what, how old are you? Huh? 13. All right, I believe this is about uh, 12 years old. Okay? All right, the, when you were in diapers, the tailor was like, oh, 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 all right. <laughs> Trying to make, all right, but guess what? Most, all right, I, I, like, have, I, I like nice suits. But what I've learned is, it's not all about this. And when God gives me something, I'm going to work to take care of it. Take care of it, make it, make it nice, let it last. What, what? Well, because, you know, when God gives you something, take care of it. You're showing to him that you're responsible. You're showing to him that also um, you're grateful. And also, um, I don't have to have... I don't have to have the, the world's, um, I don't have to have a, a million dollar jet. I don't have to have all, it, there are some things in life you're not going to, you're not going to get if you're going into full-time service. But that, is that what it's all about? I don't think I'll ever, ever own a chalet in Switzerland. I, I, I'm thinking I'm not missing out though. Okay. Uh, there are things that you may not be able to do, but filthy lucre and covetousness. And, and sometimes, I know it can, it can weigh on you, and that's probably why the Bible is saying be careful. Because when you're in full-time service, guess what you're almost always, if you're in any ministry, guess what you need? Money. You need money to run the buses. You need money if you're heading up a ministry. It could be in a small ministry. It could be a large ministry. I can tell you this. Small or large, you're still going to need money. And it seems like it, there's never enough. And part of it is because you always want to do more. There's always somebody you can say, man, I could get more scriptures. I could send this other missionary out. I could do this or that. But don't make that turn you into a uh, covetous, materialistic person. I was just, uh, 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 my wife was just, 
uh, showing me this past weekend. And here's a, a, a missionary that's on the film, and now they got a degree. And we looked up on their, because uh, you can look up on their website and all this, and not only are they a missionary now, they're a partner in a law firm. I'm like, whoa. Wait a minute. No, oh, I'm a partner now. And everybody is saying, uh, oh, congratulations. This is so great. I wasn't thinking so. It's all in my mind. I was thinking, wow. Man, being a partner, that's prestige. It's money. What about your ministry? Are there souls that are not going to be reached because, oh, I've got to run and I'm going to represent in the court. Watch, watch out for materialism. It'll take your heart and make it run. Remember, that's what um, Timothy, Paul warned Timothy. Their, their hearts are pierced through with many sorrows. That's what money can do. And as a Christian, it doesn't matter if I'm in full-time service or just a good layman. What I love about uh, a lot of our laymen here their pocketbooks are God's laid out for him. And what I've tried to teach them, because, and, and actually over the last couple years, a lot of them have come and they talked to me because they were fine with saying, you know what, God has given me uh, an ability and I'm going to make a lot of money and I'm going to give them some, but man, I like this and this and this too. And it started grabbing me. Because, oh, they were giving some to God, and they were giving a lot to God. But you know what? Since I'm doing that, I get to have this, too. Be careful. Because then that's going to be more and more and more. Material attainment disorder. So we have bad, bad attitude disorder. Mad, material attainment disorder. Then our last one. This is Acts chapter 5. Most of us know the story of Ananias and Sapphira. A certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? As thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down, gave it the ghost. And then, we know just a, a few minutes later, his wife comes in and does the same thing. Okay? I, I preached this to the church in our stewardship time. I would love to say the meaning of this passage is that you need to give everything. And if you don't, God's going to kill you right now. So right here, I got people down here, whatever your credit card is, we now can, we can scan the max uh, there. So your credit cards will max out for you. Um, all your money, if you could just give yourself. Because if not, God's killing you. You're going to walk out, zap, you're done. But that's really not the, that's not the point of this. The point of it is in the chapter before, you see that people were giving all, and there just seemed to be a joy. There was unity. There was happiness. And they wanted part of that, but they didn't want to give all. So what is that? All right, that's my sad. Spiritual attention disorder. They wanted the attention. They wanted to wreck it. Hey, look what we're doing! Look at we gave it. Oh, did you, they sold it. Here we go. Let's let's knock it. Uh, are you? Sh I mean, could you guys move that over the plaque there? I mean, that it's kind of close to these names over here. Could you? Could you just? Could you? Could they spotlight? Could you just kind of turn that spotlight on here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bigger font. Yeah, that looks like twelve. All right. That looks like a twelve times Ro times New Roman. I would like it kind of bold, and let's make that like a 26 font. Could you, could you guys do that? All right, here, what do they want? They want the recognition. And this happens to us too. And that's why I call it spiritual attention disorder. 
Spiritual attention disorder is all about us. It's pride. It's self-oriented life. Any service you do, any spiritually directed activity is centered around what I get out of it and what recognition I get. That is a sad disorder. Spiritual attention disorder. Why are you doing what you're doing? Do you know that God knows your heart? That's why we took the theme this year, doing that which is right in God's eyes, as opposed to in the book of Judges, every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Who cares what everybody else is saying? I've got to please God. He's got to be satisfied with what I'm doing. And whether I think it or not, if I'm in my closet, if I'm in my study, if I'm in my office, if I'm in my car by myself, if I'm at work by myself, God sees. And he sees when I cheat things. He sees when, but he also, if I understand that, he can help me. Because you know what's going to happen? Sometimes you're going to be out door knocking and you're just going to be flat out tired. You're going to be dealing with somebody and you're not going to have a clue of what to say. But if the proper perspective is there, then what you're going to do is go to God. And God can help you. But if it's all centered around you, and this even happens with counseling. You know, some people, they counsel so that that person can be kind of uh, hitched on them. So then, it's like, all right. Oh, um, can, I, can I go into the 12, uh, 12 sessions again? Well, you know, um, I'll try. Oh, it was just so, so wonderful. All right, and guess what happens? All of a sudden, I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of, I just try to work at it. Try to, try to help out and try to do the little that I can. It's just this false humanity. No, come on. You almost like these people just graveling there at your feet. And like, yeah. Let me see if I can squeeze a little nugget for you here. Pause it. All right. Spiritual attainment disorder centers around us. And in our lives, our lives need to be centered around God and Christ. Three disorders. If you study your Bible, you'll find that there's a lot more. A lot of disorders. But I go back to the beginning. And the beginning is that when we're having some of these problems, my, my suggestion to you, my plea to you, is go to the person that can resolve it. You'll go to, like the disciples, they couldn't do it. Then go to Christ. Go to the word of God that's been given to you. Spend some time with your Savior. Spend some time with this book. Get a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And you know what you'll find? Those maladies that are there in your heart? He'll start helping you with them. He has the prescription to take care of these needs. A writer recorded, a journalist recorded in October 31st, 1983. There was a Korean Airlines flight. Believe it or not, the flight number was 007. It departed from Anchorage. It was going, it was a direct flight to Seoul, Korea. Unknown to the crew, the computer engaging the flight navigation system contained a half a degree routing error. That's it. A half a degree. At the point of departure, the mistake was unnoticeable. And, you, uh, you know, most, maybe you don't know this, but when they're flying, I mean, the pilot's not sitting there the whole time. All right? Not, not in today's society. They put it on this navigation. The navigation basically determines it. But the navigation system had a half a degree error. 100 miles out, the deviation was still so small, it was undetectable. But as the 747 continued through the Aleutians out over the Pacific, 
it started getting very off. Eventually, and, and the pilots, they must not have been paying attention because they put it in, so they probably weren't thinking that it was going off. If, if you're flying especially long, uh, it is odd how the routes go. I know when I was going to China, um, the pilot got on and we went, the, we went two different ways. We went both, both ways. We went one uh, west and one we went east. And the one, we were over Norway and Iceland, I think he said. All right? So, and, and, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you just go like, Beer. all right? No, it, it, there's patterns. And so probably the pilot wasn't paying attention that much. But eventually, the plane was flying over Soviet airspace. This was in 1983. Soviet radar picked up the air, and their fighter jets were deployed over mainland Russia. The 747 was shot down by the fighter jets. All killed. You know why? Because a half a degree off. Disorders, catch them as soon as you can. Why? Because you just let something go and go and go. Destruction, early, early detection, you're gonna, yeah, it may cost you a little pride. It may cost you a, a little bit of heartache. But it won't end up in death. And that's what this airline, can you imagine when they found out that here was a computer error, a half a degree. Choose your direction well. A poor choice may seem minor, but years down the road, it may be irreversible. Heads bowed, eyes closed.